Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Marty Weems from American Rare Earths, an ASX listed company. Marty, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing great, Tracy. Thank you for having me today. Now, let's just hit the ground running. Latest news release starts with outstanding, not, not minorly good or above average, drill assay results. That just seems super exciting based on the highlights I read. Let's start there, please. Yeah, we're, we're very excited about our project in Wyoming, the, uh, the Hallett Creek Rare Earth Project, uh, Southeast Wyoming, Albany County, fantastic jurisdiction. Um, this is a project we were introduced to um, maybe a little over a year ago, and it was a tiny land package with a little bit of surface data, and this is a maiden drilling. So we expanded the land package due to some exciting surface sampling over the past uh, year. And then in March, we were able to do this maiden drilling. XRF data in the field got us uh, pretty excited to see these assay results come back. Uh, and, and sure enough, uh, the, that was confirmed. And um, just mineralization is consistent surface to depth. Uh, and, and we had mineralization at depth. So we're, we're really excited about what we see in both size and grade opportunity in Wyoming. High value magnet rare earth oxides comprise 26%. That sounds good. In fact, that sounds shockingly good. Yeah, we, we're really motivated by that. We're, you know, uh, as you know, and, and many of your uh, listeners and readers will know, you know, the magnet rare earths are the economics that really drive rare earths uh, in the current market and we think, you know, well over the next decade. So, uh, that is the, the core focus are the magnet rare earths and having, you know, a, a resource where the distribution within the rare earths is greater than 20%. We, by our estimation, that puts it in a fairly world-class distribution. Um, so we're quite excited, excited to see that number being as high as it is. Uh, that, that gives us plenty to work with. Well, I, I think your subheading says it very clearly. Uh, this will make this project to be one of the largest rare earth deposits in North America. So I'm going to back you up a little bit because not everybody uh, knows about American rare earths, understands mm -hmm. American rare earths, or appreciates that you're a contender. Okay. Yeah. In fact, I, I've been fighting with Jack Lipton about this. So let's <laughs> yeah. start there. Who yeah. are you, please? Yeah. So. American Rare Earths Limited is an Australian mineral exploration company, and uh, we are focused on U.S. deposits of, of rare earths. And we've we've taken a bit of a, a counter approach. You know, typically mining is uh, you know exploration. It's it's size and uh, you know it's grade is king, uh, and size. Well, we 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 believe that we won't dispute that. Um, so we certainly think size is of great importance. You know, chasing little veins of high grade stuff doesn't really accomplish a lot, in my opinion. Um, but there's also the thorium problem in the United States. You know, there's, you know, Jack will be quick to tell you that uh, the NRC has not issued a new uh, permit for handling, um, you know, radioactive material in a greenfield mine in, in more than a couple of decades. And there's probably no one at the NRC that even knows where the form is. So uh, we've chosen to go after projects that are extraordinarily low in thorium content. Now, those projects may be a bit lower in grade than some of our competitors, but you know we think we've got a smoother path to permitting if we can maintain uh, under that piercing the veil of 500 parts per million, and we're well under that. You know, so the our uh, Arizona project La Paz. Uranium thorium combined is about six parts per million. Our project in Wyoming runs about 65 parts per million. So, uh, by staying under that, uh, piercing that veil of needing an NRC permit, uh, which is which is our goal, uh, ultimately we think we have a a different approach here that has a a, a tenable permitting path, and. We're working closely with U.S. National Labs uh, you know, and uh, a number of major universities to be able to operationalize that in extraction, separation, and purification so we can onshore the supply chain. And of course, we were just discussing before we started this interview how the media is looking at Australia 
Uh, with regards to Linus's most recent announcement about getting the 120 million from the Department of Defense for their heavy rare earth processing facility. Um, so they're looking at Australians. Talk yep. to me about this. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I'm encouraged by that news. You know, the uh, you and you and Jack have been saying for quite a long time to solve this problem, especially the U.S. is going to uh, require substantial U.S. government involvement. Uh, and we need and, and if you look at uh, every announcement that certainly this administration has made, there's always that tag of, uh, you know, we will use all of these resources and allies. Well, those allies include Canada and Australia, and they're looking not only for, um, you know, resource, but also expertise, you know, and we've leaned on Canadian expertise. We've leaned on Australian expertise at Nagram Labs. Um, you know, this is a, an allied effort, um, and it will take more than one or two companies to solve the problem. Um, this industry, you know, depending on which calculus you use, it has to double or more uh, over the next decade just to meet the electric vehicle demand um, that's projected. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to see substantive, robust engagement by the U.S. government and putting budget dollars to support onshoring the supply chain. Uh, and, I, and I think it bodes really well for us as well. Um, and where we're playing in that space and, and really leaning in is with the U.S. National Laboratories. We're a team member of the Critical Materials Institute, relationships with major universities. And just this morning, and I suspect you haven't had the opportunity to see this because it literally broke as we came on today, um, we have been, uh, we're a part of a consortium with Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory uh, that was just awarded $13 million to research our feedstock uh, with some new bioleaching, bioengineering um, capabilities that are intended to go not only do extraction, but also separation of rare earths. Um, that's a DARPA funded project. Uh, the initial funding is $4 million of 13. Uh, it's partnering with the University of Kentucky, with Penn State, um, and we're really quite excited about that as well and that's that's brand new news out this morning you're correct i'm like why didn't i start the interview with that so let's go there quick yeah. <laughs> can you tell us about this news this is mm -hmm. breaking congratulations marty and to your team i i warn people all the time be careful be careful of the stealth like players <laughs> behind the scenes you may not know exist so yeah. tell me a little bit more about this announcement please yeah, I, and I'm a little cautious to talk about it mainly because we don't want to detract from this really great news about our potential new resource in Wyoming. We are really excited about the rocks in Wyoming. Um, that is a tremendous opportunity to establish a new maiden resource in Wyoming, we think, as we look to drill again later this year. And we have more data coming off the, our spring campaign from drilling in March. We still don't have all the data from that, so there'll there'll be some more news as that uh, those assays come in so uh, there's still plenty to talk about in Wyoming but yes uh, you know to your actual question here uh, very exciting in this work it's a, a project using a, a um, plant protein um, microbe called landmodulin that was discovered by Penn, uh, professor Joey Catruvo at Penn State um, really remarkable uh, we're amazed by uh, the simplicity of it so uh, as you know, you've, you know, you've been at this a long time. You've heard all, all kinds of new technologies that are going to change the game. And, you know, and then, you know, three years later, you've heard nothing about it. Um, but from a, you know, from an engineering and scale background, I see opportunity with this particular technology because of its simplicity. Um, and simplicity gives you the opportunity to scale when when you're dealing with uh, engineering processes and that's a great thing we see and they're showing uh, published success now with not only extraction from a pregnant leachate but also separation and if that continues progress then you're you're talking about the idea of skipping a billion dollar mixer settler plant to get from source to high purity individual uh, rare earth element oxide that, uh, that's literally game-changing opportunity if that if we can get this uh, commercialized with DARPA 
Well, I'll tell you, that's such big news that I will be speed dialing Jack when I get off this phone and I'll be using something I never use in these processes, <laughs> which is simple, the threat of simple. I'll tell you, Marty, yeah. thank you so much for joining us today. That's Marty Weems from American Rare Earths and ASX Listed Company. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Tracy.